objectively right. And, and that creates these, these types of scenarios that we're talking about. Now, this isn't the one rule that drives me nuts. Here is the rule I think is too punitive. It was Oakland, Dallas. Let's do sound up for the audience. Derek Carr running for the touchdown. Carr under pressure, avoids the sack, and he's going to try to run it in. Oh, and he's going to lose the ball. Yeah, did he lose the ball? This could be a touchback. The ruling on the field is that the runner fumbled forward through the end zone and out of the end zone. Touchback. The ruling on the field is a touchback. First down, Dallas. Now, again, they got it right. Dean, it seems incredibly punitive. In the NBA, this would be like saying, if you miss a dunk, because you're going for a dynamic dunk. The other team gets an uncontested layup and possession of the ball. Sure. Why is it? Why do you give up possession on this? It's it's a severe penalty. I, I agree with you, and we've talked about this with the competition committee. It's consistent with other loose balls that are that go through the opponent's end zone, the kickoff, the punt. And I think we've talked about it the last time I was on. At one point in the NFL, an incomplete pass in your opponent's end zone was a touchback. <laughs> and and they changed that, obviously, to promote the passing game. But, again, it's consistent with the other loose balls through the opponent's end zone. It's a big penalty. But the bottom line is you did a bad thing. You fumbled the football. Couldn't there I, has to be a penalty. Couldn't I argue, though? I, you don't want to punish athletes for trying to be great. Derek Carr, that would have been the play of the weekend in sure, the NFL. Sure. And he's trying to be great, and the ball just comes out of his sure. grab. There was nothing. The, the intent was not criminal. No, not at all. And, and you do want to encourage great athletes to make great athletic plays. You know, there, there's the other scenario, though. Why can't you move it back to the 20? You could. And you retain and, and, possession. And I think that's retaining possession. There has to be. I wouldn't be opposed to that. There has to be some penalty. It, no, can't, yes. it can't come back to the spot of the uh, No, I, I totally agree it, with it, you. It has but to. It, literally, if my kid doesn't do their homework... This is like instead of just saying go to your room for yeah, the night. Don't kick him out of the house. Go don't. live with your uncle. I mean, it's just too much penalty. Okay, let's go to the fourth and one index card play by uh, the ref, Gene uh, Sterator, who's been in the league forever. He's sure. a little bit of a showman. So this is a fourth and one play uh, in during the game. And it's funny. Al Michaels made a very funny comedy. He goes, you know, we're right up the road from Silicon Valley, and we got a referee pulling out an index card. Now, a piece of paper literally determined whether the Cowboys got a first down uh, or not. What do you make of – what What are the rules here? So it's – that that isn't the protocol. The, the protocol is you, you stretch the chains, and then you make a determination based on what you see. Gene, and I love Gene. Yes. Gene, you said he's a showman. Gene is a showman, and I think he may have put it on a little bit for the cameras. Um, you know, those cards, officials all carry those cards. They write information, foul information. You know, there was a point years ago, I think it was a college game, where an official took out a credit card and did it. Why he had a credit <laughs> card on the field, I don't know. But I think Gene... Gene likes the camera, and you can see the little smirk as he as he did it. Not the protocol. He should just look at it, make a determination based on what he sees. So why did the NFL director, vice president of officiating, your former job, Mike Pereira's former job, why did they release a tape late last night? Uh, do we have that again? If we can, we could air it. They released a tape. I've never seen them do this before. Uh, basically to explain what happened. Is that just damage control? Yeah, I, I think it's damage control. That's something that, that when I was there we would do. In in lieu of a of a press release, the league used to do a press release on Monday if yeah. there was some officiating controversy. And you try to nip it in the bud early. You try to get something out Sunday night. Now we have social media. You can tweet something. You can put a video out. And then it, it, it gets it gets out to, to, to everyone. I think that's what they're doing at that point. Just yeah. clarify, here's the deal. Let people talk about it. And then hopefully it, it goes away 24 hours later. I think the one thing I'd like to say to create some simplicity here and clarity, remember what the NFL is saying with that play at the goal line. It drives me crazy. I, I, I just like when it was a catch. Is that... Whether that play was at the 10, the 50, or the goal line, you have to complete the catch. The Des Bryant play is the perfect example. No question. You think you have it? Two feet moving forward. If you come down, regardless of position on the field, and the ball is jarred, the Des play is the perfect example. It is not, therefore, a catch. Exactly. And I think in, and the two plays are similar in that both receivers are trying to reach the ball out for the end zone. Yes. When you do that, you put yourself at risk. And that's the bottom line. And when we have these conversations with current receivers and former receivers, secure control of the football first before you do something else with it because that can lead to an incomplete pass. 30 minutes from now where Colin was right, where Colin was wrong, plus Peter King, Dean Blandino. 
Thank you. You're welcome. This was fun. Christine with the news. No, 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 no. Turn on the news. This is the Herd Line News. Well, speaking of whether that was a catch or not a catch,